There are two ways to get started with the Next.js app. Today, I'm going to show you both of them. If you're new here, hi, my name is Zoe. I'm a software engineer and former university professor that loves teaching folks how to code. If you're interested in learning how to code, check out that first link in the description below. It's a link to the bootcamp that I run. But without further ado, let's hop into the video. So if you're familiar with Next.js, you know that it's a framework that will allow you to basically spin up a React app really quickly. Think of it as a new and improved version of Create React App if you're familiar with that. But there's a couple of different ways you can get started. So if we hop over to Next.js.org and check out the documentation here, um, there you can see that there are a couple of options we can go with if we hop into the Get Started. Um, so yeah, I always recommend reading through the documentation when you're trying to learn something new um, because it'll tell you a lot of things that maybe I won't remember or you won't see in a tutorial. Um, so definitely would recommend having the nextjs.org docs at hand if you're trying to learn something new. Um, but yeah, one of the reasons people love using Next.js is because you can access the routing, the data fetching, styling optimizations. You can start it up with TypeScript. There are a lot of great reasons to use Next.js um, as opposed to trying to sort of build your own React app with all the various pieces that are necessary. And I'm going to show you um, two examples of why this is the way we're going to do it. So, if we hop over to the installation page here, um, basically there are, as I said, two ways to get this done. You can either use the create next app, or you can go ahead and then manually install it. We're gonna do both of these just so you can see the difference in how, um, sort of how the app gets set up. All right, so if we decide to do it using the manual way, which is a bit more time consuming, let's take a look at how we do that. So um, if I go into the manual installation option here, um, you can see that I just need to install all of the relevant packages to start with. So let's copy all of those and go ahead and install each of those. Uh, and actually, yeah. Okay, so if I'm, yeah, if I'm gonna do it manually, I'm gonna start by copying this and I'm actually gonna make a new directory. Um, let's call it next.js um, test app router. Um, we'll do the app router styling. So I'm just gonna do that. And then I'm gonna change directory into that. All right, now let's go ahead and copy this and get our installation started. So we're gonna say install all of those packages and um, we'll go ahead and open this folder up. But actually, the one thing we're going to need to do before any of the, that's going to work properly, we need to create a package.json file. So let's go ahead and do that um, and save that. So just an empty package.json file. And now let's try to install everything and see if it works. So you can see our node modules uh, folder has populated, it's created a package dot, uh, package lock.json file. And so we have our initial dependencies all set up there. Um, and it's giving us a little error. I want to say for that, I doubt, yeah. All right, we'll leave that as it is. Um, so yeah, we have our package.json file here. Let's go back to the instructions. So once we have created the package.json, it wants us to add some scripts to it. So let's go ahead and add these scripts. So we'll go ahead and drop that in there. And those are initial scripts. We'll probably add more scripts as we go through. So yeah, so telling us next dev, next build, next start, next lint. Um, and actually an interesting thing is that if we run, I believe, is it next build or next? Let's try running next build. I believe it'll actually um, sort of help us uh, build out our, our project here. So if I say next build uh, or npm run build, Yeah, it'll build out our next file. It'll build out our next file, but okay, we need to create um, an app directory. So let me try that again. So it made the app directory, so it gave me that error there. But if I do npm run build again, I believe it's gonna make some files for us. Let's see. Um, okay, it's doing something, it's working. Okay, let's see. It didn't actually build anything in the, the files itself. So like in terms of, I, it might um, create like a layout uh, file here. So we're just gonna do it for ourselves. So we'll say layout.tsx and page.tsx. So those are two files that we're gonna actually need if we want um, our app router to work properly. So we've gotten those two created. Um, and as you see here, it says we need to create a root layout 
uh, using the required HTML and body tag. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to drop that in our layout file. And I think it's going to, yeah, it's going to give me an error because I don't have React and import at the top of the page. So we'll just do that. We'll do that in our page, or in, yeah, in our page file as well. We're going to copy this here. And I'm just going to drop that there. Awesome. And. Interesting, that's causing an error. Interesting. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah, so. Oh, maybe I'd put uh, next dev. They would have done it automatically. Okay. Um, we can also create a public folder, which is something that would allow us to hold all of our um, like pictures and images and things like that, that we need to access. So that's something else we do ourselves. Um, and then if I try, oh, and then we have to set up TypeScript. I think that might also be part of the issue. Um, so if I need to set up TypeScript, I believe, ah, I need to do next run, run uh, npm run dev, and that should, yeah, run next dev, and then it automatically creates our TS config, which is good because that way we don't have to do um, that ourselves. So and that fixed our layout issue. Perfect. So we've gone ahead and it's created a TS config with a bunch of our options there, so we don't need to worry about that, which is awesome. The other thing I want to test out, I think if I run uh, npm run lint, it's going to go ahead and set up the ES lint. Um, so minimum recommended. Okay, so how would you like configure ES lint? Um, strict, base, or cancel? I'm gonna say base just because I think the strict can be a little bit strict. Um, I guess it's supposed to be, but uh, that's what I'm gonna do there. All right, cool. And it's been configured. And then if I run uh, lint again, npm run lint, it's gonna give me any errors. Um, great, and we don't have any errors so far because we really haven't done too much. So that is how I would start it up essentially without um, without using the, the create next app sort of um, prepackaged version there. Um, what else do we need to set up here? We've done, it's done TypeScript for us. Mm, it's done that. Set up absolute paths, paths and model path alliances. Um, okay, so then we need to go through these configs as well. So add the base URL option to your TS config. Okay, so we'll go to we'll copy this compiler options. Oh, we copy this. And then we'd want to put it in our, oh, we have some compiler options already. base URL. Right, okay, and so we'd have that there. And so if we created a new folder called components, components, um, it should allow us to import it. We might have to change this, but it should allow us to import it um, just at whatever the name of the component is as we're importing it, our files into other files. Um, so yeah. That's kind of how I'd start off if I really wanted to do this as um, like as a sort of by scratch for um, from scratch sort of project. But I think doing it with the next uh, create next app is the really the better way to go because it's going to be a lot faster. So if we check that out. Um, so if I go with the first option here, MPX create next app at latest, I'm just going to copy that. And I've already sort of moved into my development folder. I'm just going to paste that and we're going to try and run this. So we hit that, let it run. And then it starts to give us a series of prompts. So now we can say, um, you know, we'll give our title a name. So I'm just going to say uh, next JS starter app. We'll call it that. Would I like to use TypeScript? Yes, I would, but you don't have to. Uh, ESLint, yes, I would. Would I like to use Tailwind? Tailwind? I'm going to say no, but this is good to notice. If you do want to use Tailwind, you can just say yes to that. So I'm going to say no. Um, would I like my code inside a source directory? This kind of comes from that Create React app um, style. I'm not going to do a source directory, but again, you can if you want to. 
I'm gonna say no. Would I like to use app router? Yes, there are two routers that are available with Next.js, the app router and the pages router, and this will automatically put you in one or the other depending on what you want. The app router is the newer router, which is why it's the recommended. So I'm gonna say yes to that. And would I use, like to use Turbo, Turbo Pack for Next.js? I'm gonna say no to that. And would I like to customize the import alias? Uh, no, I'll just leave it as it is. And so now, as you can see, it's gone ahead and installed a bunch of dev dependencies, TypeScript, types, um, ESLint, et cetera. And it's just gonna spin that up really quickly for us. Um, that's the other really cool thing about Create Next app. It does it super, super quickly. So it's gone ahead and built this uh, starter app. So I'm just gonna move over to that folder. And then I'm going to see, I'm gonna open up, ah, let me open up the folder here. All right, got that up and open. And let's just open up a new terminal. And as you can see, um, our node modules folder has already been installed there. So we can actually just type in npm run dev and it should just get our app up and running there. Yeah, and there we go. We're started at localhost 3000. So if I pop over here and I open up localhost 3000, let me just copy that. And there we go. You can see that basically it's done everything for us. Um, you know, it's even connected to, I believe this is, yeah, it's connected to Vercel, so you can really easily deploy the app if you want to do that. Um, but if you take a look at the actual file and folder structure, they've done pretty much everything for us. So this is a really great reason to use the Create Next app. Um, it's a great option in terms of just not having to set everything up from scratch. So if you look inside the app folder, we can take a look at what we have here. We have the Favicon, which is just what they're using for the, um, the logo, the little icon up here. We have a global CSS folder, um, which just gives us all of our CSS styles. We have a layout file here, sorry, a global file and a layout file, um, which basically is part of that app routing structure. You need a layout file and you need a page file. So this layout file establishes our HTML, our body, and then it accesses a lot of those, um, those global styles. And then our layout file is what will um, render our page file. So then we have our page file that um, goes within that. And that is basically what we have, we're seeing here. So get started by editing um, at page.tsx, et cetera. That's what we're seeing um, in our, um, on our layout file and our page file. So, and then we have our page module CSS and these styles are specific to the page module. Um, so yeah, that's the really quick way to set it up. As you can see, there are a lot of different files that it comes with, a lot of different images. Um, it sets up your git ignore file, which is also great because then you don't have to go do that by yourself, which is a lot of work. Um, you know, you set up your Next.js, um, uh, sorry, you set it up to ignore Next, you, you know, it's set to ignore your um, no modules, um, your Next config is set up, your package.json file is all set up, um, you know, your readme if you, you know, so, so need it, and then your TS config, which is also major. Um, so, so the next thing we could do with this one now, um, you know, one thing that I really like to do is use Material UI. Um, so we could actually work on integrating this with Material UI. So there is a default installation. There's an installation with style components. Um, there are a couple of different ways you can do it. I think I'm just gonna do the default installation here and see how that works. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna open up a new terminal window here. Install that. Cool. And now Material UI should be installed. I believe there's one more step we need to do though. So let me see if there's something else. Um, we can also go ahead and install style components. So we'll do that. And we can install the font. Um, if we're gonna use it, we don't have to, if we're not gonna use it, but I'll go ahead and install it anyway as we're doing that. And then I'll go ahead and copy. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the, um, the fonts. and I'll drop it in here. Just in case we wanna use it. We don't necessarily have to, but it's an option. Um, oh yeah, and then I often use the icons. I'm gonna go ahead and install the icons. I think that'll be useful. Um, they're not rec 
recommend using the CDN. Okay, so then let's see. Um, all right, so let's see if this works. So we have our Create Next app already up and spinning. Let's go ahead and look at the page. And what I'll do, I'll just try and change this to a box and see if that works and if we can import it. Um, so we'll say import box from uh, Mui Material, I believe, is it Mui Material? Ah, let's add Mui slash Material. Let's see if that works. Mm. Slash box, I believe. And that should work. Let's give it a refresh. Awesome, so that seems to be working correctly. Um, we could try it again. We could actually do maybe a button and import that from material by slash button test because that'll really tell us if we're using material UI specific styles. There we go. So we have the button here and it seems to be working. So yeah. Um, this is actually something that I'll go ahead and push up and sort of use as a new um, a new starter because I think you know it's a good way to really update the starter. But what would you have in your starter kit if you were to go ahead and build something like this? For me, it's Next.js, it's TypeScript, it's Material UI. You know, I need ESLint in there and all these things that I'll use quite frequently. Um, but for you, what would you put in yours? But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to improve your JavaScript skills, check out this playlist right here. It's a set of 30 JavaScript tutorials that I filmed over the course of 30 days, starting at beginner and going up to pretty advanced. But I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.